who is a game master. Game master normally is a person who runs the LARP during the runtime. What is the runtime then? Runtime is the time when the magic circle starts and when it ends. What is the magic circle? The magic circle then is the time when a person starts to play a character. Okay? So one more time. Game master is a person who runs the LARP during the runtime. Clear. Um, yeah. So, uh, game master style. On this fader we have the upper part which is active game master style and the lower one which is passive game master style. You have already tried the games with the active game master style. What is that? When our destinies meet. Good. And uh, with, the yeah, with the passive uh, game master style that was, for example, new voices in art. Um, yeah. When we're talking about Game Master style, we are not only talking about the runtime, uh, but we are also talking about pre-game and post-game, which are connected to it. In this presentation, I would be talking mostly about the runtime Game Master style, but you have to be aware that it is not limited to it. So, um, Fedor Maximum, active Game Master. What you gain is a lot of control. First of all, let's take an example of when our destinies meet. Probably you have heard and, and kind of felt that the game master was steering the direction of where the game is going, where the LARP is going, and also he was controlling the pacing of the game so that um, it is ends in the right time. Um, the pacing, uh, it's, it, it can be in different ways. For example, uh, let's take, uh, you have a two hour LARP and um, um, your players have done everything in the first 30 minutes. It will be a lot easier for a, an active game master to step into the game, into the LARP and introduce or think of something and add to the game for your players to play on it. Um, and it might be, of course, what, vice versa. The game master would have to speed up the events so that keep the, the LARP ends in time, in two hours. Um, we also have uh, challenging the players on the plus side. Uh, it's good that a game master, if he sees that the game is really boring, he can come in and do something, make the players act or react to something. But I would say that you have to be very careful with this thing because the game always looks more boring from the outside than it is inside. So be careful with this one. Um, I have a wonderful example. I was um, running a LARP once and uh, there was a, a player who, um, who would sit for like the whole duration of the runtime that would be one hour and something. And he said like two words, and that's it. And like after I, I asked, are you okay? Did you like it or, or what? Like why? And he's like, wow, I was having the time of my life. That was fantastic. <laughs> so you never know. Um, and the one more plus is that you might give your players a feeling of safety. When uh, your players see that there is a GM in the playing area, it, it reminds them that it is still a LARP and it can also give them one more, say, alibi to act and to interact with the world and surroundings with you created. On the downside of it, an active game master may limit the player immersion. Uh, by breaking the play constantly or stopping and cutting scenes and so on, your players wouldn't get a consistent immersive experience. Um, sometimes game masters also have a tendency to overdoing things. You have this little thing that you worked on for a month or even years and you want your players to understand it, to feel it and to, you know that this is the thing. And your players are moving kind of in a bit of a different direction. Then you tend to like go into play and make it, make it, make it so that they understand it. But you tend to overdo it. They kind of can get it a lot easier than that. 
Um, and we also have that uh, the game master can become the center of attention. It can take the spotlight from the players and be the one who, who is all about the game, not the player, but he or she. Right. Does that make sense? Is it clear? Cool. Um, yeah, fade the minimum. Here we have a passive game master style, which also has uh, some of the pluses. First of all, um, high level of freedom, of player freedom. You give um, everything to the players, and this can be very rewarding as a player. Because you can take your story, your ideas, and well, your things which you want to do in the LARP. And with this, you can create what you want. Um, yeah, uh, it also enhances the player immersion. So the, uh, the play is not broken. You do uh, everything in order, the natural flow of events. This is really good. I like it a lot. Um, and uh, yeah, the player ownership of the story, I think I mentioned it, but one, once again, you feel that it is your story. And this, is, this also works like as a game master, you think that this is the best thing, this is the best idea, the best flow of events, I want the players to do this. But for this very set of players that you have today, at this very moment, this may be just not the very right direction of where they want to go and where they can go. And they know in this group of players, they know it better. So they can take their experience to what, where they want to go. Um, what you lose is you lose control because it will be very difficult for you as a passive game master to step in the game and to start introduce new rules or, I don't know, new meta techniques if you haven't done or said about this before in the pre-game part, for example. Um, and you also cannot foresee what, what will happen. So you have to trust your players to trust that they will take responsibility for their experience, for their immersion, and that they would take the story in the direction they want it to go. Clear? So uh, I would say that a big part of being a runtime game master is about letting go and letting your players play, basically. Um, here is the list of some Game Master tools uh, which I think you all tried or have heard of or used in this Lower Priority Summer School. Uh, from the bottom uh, and up, they start with quite a very discreet and two intrusive ones. Um, but I, I have to say that um, being a, an active game master or just a game master is not about how much time you spend in the game, but also how intrusive the techniques you use are. For example, we take the, the lower one, change of light and sound. Um, it's very discreet. Like when I play, sometimes I don't even see that or just, just one thing. Um, it is used in several LARPs here, I suppose. One is uh, in um, Heliantus Land, for example. Then we have new information and instructed player, um, which is also quite discreet. It is used is in Snapane. Um, and as we go up from the point of cutting and focus scenes and up, all of those um, presuppose that there is an active game master who actually is in the play. So he comes in or she comes in and stops the, the LARP, stops the runtime. And then you do the focus scenes, cutting scenes, uh, time jump, um, replay in a scene, character swap, and at the very upper part we have a change of theme or genre. Um, for example, we are playing together a realist game, social realist game. Um, with all these players, I don't think that a lot of you would in such a game go to a basement, right? And suddenly you change the LARP into, um, let's say, a horror LARP. Um, of course, all the rules in this LARP change. And now your character would probably say, OK, let's split up. I'll go to the basement alone. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, so, um, not all of the techniques can. Yes? What is a fade plate? Fade plate. Um, you can. Yeah, I would come to it probably. Uh, good question. Fade play is uh, when you instruct the player that they have do something in the LARP. All of them have some instructions or thing that they have to achieve. Yeah. Okay. So um, I was going to say that uh, not all of the techniques would work for all of the LARPs. For example, you can cut a scene with 20 players in a black box. But it will be a lot difficult, more difficult to use when you have 500 players in a forest. Because you would need to run around the forest and shout. Or a lot of game masters. Okay. Um, how much time do I have? Okay. Uh, so, uh, I would say that um, be aware of the tools that you are using and think one or two steps ahead of why am I using it, how much am I going to use it, and what for? Um, it may be also that um, it is okay to use this or that technique 10 times, but it, it is a lot different if you use a very intrusive technique of character swap 10 times in a 10-day LARP. And it's not that much in a 10 times in a 2-hour LARP. Thank you. <laughs>